Here we are, chapter 11.2, lesson number two on taking a look at uh, heat or Q in this case. So we're taking a look at the formula of Q is equal to MC delta T and the examples that go along with it to talk about uh, when a substance or a sample of material heats up or cools down because heat is the transfer of energy. It is only ever applicable when we talk about something warming up or something cooling down. So we have a sample of 250 mils of water that is going to be warmed up from 22.2 to 75 degrees C. Therefore, Q is equal to MC delta T is the appropriate formula to use. We just need to know the mass of water and the specific heat capacity of water, which is given to us on a data table, and the amount of heating up or cooling down. So one thing that you guys will want to know here is how to transform or interpret volumes of water to a mass of water. And it's a very simple calculation. One milliliter of water is equal to one gram of water. All right, this is a standard that you guys can use. I expect you to memorize it and be able to apply that going forward. So anytime that you have a volume of water, uh, we can interpret that as an equivalent mass of water. One mil is equal to one gram. So for our first value here, we actually have 250 grams of water. If we go to our data table, and you'll find this in your data booklet on, I think it's page three, just past the uh, periodic table. All right, we do have the materials. There's a, a list of, I think, five or six of them in your data booklet, and you have specific heat capacities given for each one. Since I have a mass here in grams, I'm going to use the joule per gram degree C value for water, which in this case is 4.186 joules per gram degree C. And then we have to figure out our temperature change. Remember that we had said earlier on that change is always a final value minus an initial. So we can put that right into our calculation here. A final temperature of 75.0 minus 22.2 degrees C gives us our temperature change. So we can run through uh, that through our calculator. It's just simply 250 times 4.186 times our difference here of 75 minus 22.2. And we end up with a value of 55,255.2. Our units will just be joules because the grams cancel, the degrees C cancel, and we're just left with joules. All right, so we can still do our unit analysis there. We have to put this into a three sig dig limit, so we do have to do a couple of things. Number one, put this into kilojoules. All right, so we'll move our decimal to three places. A kilojoule is a thousand times larger measurements, so there should be fewer kilojoules than joules. And so now we have 55.2552 kilojoules of energy or heat transferred here. I now need to correct this for my sig digs. I have a three sig dig limit here. And so there's my first three digits. The five is the first digit to be dropped, so that will round me up. And so my correct answer here is 55.3 kilojoules. Okay, we can take a look at another one here. Pretty straightforward. 10 grams of aluminum increases in its temperature from 10 to 20 degrees C. The amount of heat gained is how many joules this time? So be mindful of what the question is asking for. So another very simple Q is equal to MC delta T problem. We've been given an exact mass here of 10.0 grams. I am dealing with a different material, so we'll have a different specific heat capacity. So using your data sheet, we can find out aluminum is 0 0.900 according to this one. All right, and so 0 0.900 joules per gram degree C. Please be in the habit of including your units in your calculations. It does defend some of the work and is related to some of the other stuff we'll do with stoichiometry and uh, the factor label method. You can see that we have an increase of temperature here from 10 to 20 degrees. So you can actually put everything in there if you wish. Final temperature of 20 minus the initial temperature of 10 degrees C. You can see that the grams will cancel as they're above one another. Degrees C will cancel and again we're left with joules like we had in the first example. All right, so here we have 10 times 0.9 times another 10. And so we end up with 90.0 joules. 
pretty straightforward formula. That it is um, the one you guys learned in the climate unit of uh, Science 10, and it has not changed since then. So let's take advantage of the fact that we have a Science 10 formula and concept being repeated for us here at the beginning of uh, Chemistry 30. A couple more examples to look at here, and then we'll uh, get you working on some practice material. All right, we can rearrange the formula like uh, any other one. And so here we have 2,000 joules of energy added to 100 mils of water. Remember, that would be 100 grams of water. And the change in temperature, or delta T, would be how many degrees C. So Q is equal to MC delta T. In this case, I am looking for delta T, so I need to isolate that. It's an enumerator position. That's a good thing, so it makes most sense to just divide out the product of MC in order to isolate my delta T. So that gives me the change in temperature being equal to the energy or heat all over the mass times the specific heat capacity. I can put that into my formula here. I had 2000.0 joules of thermal energy that was being transferred here. And I have a 100.0 mil volume of water. So that is 100.0 grams of water. And I also have the specific heat capacity for water, which we had on our data table on the previous page, 4.186 joules per gram degree C. Okay, joules are over top of each other, they cancel. Grams are over top of each other. And dividing a fraction with a fraction means multiplying by the reciprocal. That puts my degrees C back up in the numerator. So I just have to resolve the number here. Do this math. Put it over here. All right, and we get 4. 7732 dot 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 uh, degrees C of temperature change. Again, we do have uh, sig digs to correct here, right? Your calculator rarely tells you the correct answer. It usually has to be modified for the digits we have. Five with our energy, four with our specific heat and our mass. And so there's four digits right there, the two rounds down. And so my correct answer is. 4.773 degrees C of temperature change. Okay, uh, I will make note of a couple of things. Uh, the numbers here I had in the notes are just from a convenient data table that I uh, found off of a quick Google search, and it's using a few more digits than your um, data booklet does. And so what you'll find is in your textbook questions and uh, for questions that we'll be doing on future assignments and tests, it'll be 4.19 as the three digit constant that we use for this, okay? So just understand that you'll have a different value for water that you'll start to memorize. One other thing we can do, and we'll see this on the diploma exam, is they sometimes like to take the calculator out of your hand and just see if you understand the formula. So if we take a look at just changing things more holistically or looking at factor changes for this one here, all right, we can take a look at what would happen to the amount of thermal energy transferred if the mass of the substance was uh, tripled, what would happen if the temperature was quartered, and what if we did a bunch of other things. So if we take a look at A here, we know that Q is equal to MC delta T. But we're trying to figure out what is the new Q, or what would happen to Q if we change some of these properties. So what I'll do here is just use Q prime, which is... Uh, Kind of a convenient way of showing old versus new. So I'll have a new thermal energy here, or thermal energy transfer, I should say, based upon the changes that I see. And so I had a tripling of the mass. I made no change to C, and I made no change to the delta T. So what we can do is look for the product of all these factors, since these three things are being multiplied together. And so my new Q is just equal to three times mc delta t. If you take a look at it, old q is equal to mc delta t, so we can just transplant that here, and it gives us a mathematical proof that says we have three times the old energy if we triple the mass. Okay, this formula is very straightforward. It is very direct. Everything is proportional or directly related to one another, as it is all just a product of these three things. And so, if we were to take a look at B, it's the same thing happening here. If the temperature was quartered, 
All right, so I have an original energy based upon MC delta T. I want to know what is my new energy if I take a look at the changes. I made no change to the mass. I made no change to the specific heat capacity. But I did change my delta T to one quarter its original value, or one fourth. So take that uh, factor, and so I have one quarter multiplied by MC delta T. And so with MC delta T being the original Q, I can therefore say that my whoops, new Q is just equal to one quarter the old Q. Okay, if I have one quarter the original uh, temperature that I measure, I have one quarter the kinetic energy of those particles. Okay, so we're just defending this with our formula, but it's pretty straightforward. You guys can do this in your head. All right, we can see one where we make uh, multiple changes here. We're going to see what happens if the mass is doubled and the temperature is tripled. So I'll just throw, uh, throw in this proof again. Q is equal to MC delta T. Therefore, new Q is just equal to a doubling of the mass, so 2m. C was left unchanged, and we had a tripling of the temperature, 3 times delta T. So I can take this factor, move it to the front, and so I have 2 times 3 and mc delta T. Okay, this can be simplified one more time. 2 times 3 is 6, and mc delta T, remember, was our original heat or thermal energy transfer and so I just have six times the old energy by making those changes. Okay, hope that made sense for you. Go practice. Don't forget to read through the textbook here. These aren't just uh, suggestions or um, a waste of ink. Make sure that you are looking at the textbook. It is a different perspective on the same things I've talked about here. All right. We're going to talk about calorimetry next, so please take a look at how we do get this information with something called a calorimeter, and try the questions on page 487. Uh, question number 8 is an efficiency question, just in case you don't remember that formula. Your efficiency is always just equal to your output, usually of energy, versus the input of your energy times 100. So hopefully that will help you out with example number eight. All of the answers for all of those questions are found on D2L uh, as the chapter 11 solutions. Okay, good luck with it. Practice that and uh, we'll see you in the next videos for the continuation of 11.2 in calorimetry.